Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. I'm joined by Carl Tolgu from the Dynamics AX R&D team. Carl, thanks for being here. It's a pleasure to be here. Why don't you, uh, why don't we start out a little bit before we get into the topic and maybe give a little bit of your background and uh, what you do and what you're responsible for in the product and on the team. Yeah, certainly. Um, so I'm a program manager on the, uh, the Microsoft Dynamics AX uh, R&D team, and uh, I've been responsible over the past two releases uh, for the workflow infrastructure. And uh, workflow is really part of the overall set of infrastructure that we uh, deliver in the Microsoft Dynamics AX, um, which includes other things such as server, uh, it includes uh, BI and reporting, mm -hmm. enterprise portal, and so on. And so my role is really to deliver uh, workflow functionality to help automate business processes across Microsoft Dynamics AX. And so I work extensively with application teams. And I've, as I said, I've worked, I've worked on uh, Dynamics AX for two releases now, um, and previously have worked on uh, Dynamics GP as well as Dynamics SL. So, so you've been, made the rounds a bit. I've made the rounds a bit, yes. Yeah, yep. absolutely. I'm pretty happy here, though. Good. So. Good. We're glad about that. Excellent. Um, so, so BPM, Business Process Management Workflow, is, it's been around for a while. It's something it that, though, is increasingly important as organizations continue to model and change processes on a dime these days. Um, talk about some of the, the capabilities that are in Dynamics AX 2012 in, in terms of, of workflow, and, and maybe for uh, those people watching or, or listening who have been on previous versions, some of the things that are different in this version as well. Well, we first introduced uh, workflow support in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2009. And it was really in response to the need to achieve greater agility in executing business processes. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you know, Dynamics AX, like virtually every business application out there, is really centered on a set of business processes, uh, such as procure to pay, uh, order to cash, mm -hmm. uh, that exist. And the business value out of all that is that those business processes execute effectively. Now, so the role of workflow here is really to help organizations automate those business processes more effectively. And we, su we support structured workflows, so you can actually uh, determine up front what you think the set of activities should be uh, to achieve a business process, such as you know, reviewing and appro approving a purchase requisition or an expense report or a timesheet. Um, and other concepts such as you know, supporting tasks that people have to execute, whether it's performing a credit check um, or reviewing a certain business document. So um, we initially rolled out workflow, as I said, in Dynamics X 2009. And uh, we've extended uh, our support now uh, in a number of different ways. So first of all, uh, the experience of how you create a workflow has been uh, enhanced a lot by introducing a graphical workflow editor. And that's something we're going to take a look at uh, in a minute. And the graphical workflow editor is really there to make it easier for both business users and application developers uh, to visualize the business process that they're automating mm -hmm. and uh, to be able to compose the business process um, and to set all the different properties. And there's a, there's a large number of properties you can set to determine how the, how the workflow functions, including assignments, escalations, notifications. And we'll, we'll highlight some of those when we look at the graphical workflow editor. So that's one, one big change. Um, a, a very large change also is the fact that we're now running on top of um, the Workflow Foundation in the .NET 4.0 framework. And we do that both as the basis for our graphical workflow editor, mm -hmm. uh, but also for our runtime. So typically, when a workflow is executed, you, you, start the pro you start the process by submitting a document, purchase requisition, or expense report, or timesheet to Workflow. And then Workflow um, actually creates what, this thing called a Workflow instance. And it's the workflow instance that lives for the duration of that business process and kind of carries state with it. So who's approved, who's, you know, who are we still waiting for to approve sure. this? Um, and that side of it, so the workflow instance itself, is um, kind of managed by the .NET 4.0 Workflow Foundation. So we're, we're kind of leveraging other Microsoft technologies uh, to do this. Um, we've increased the, the kind of richness of how you can assign work items in Workflow too. So work items, just to, to define what they are. Sure. Uh, when we uh, generate work items for human beings who are part of the process, uh, the work item represents a task, so something for you to do, so to perform that credit check or to actually do the approval. And um, work items typically are assigned to people. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole new 
capability that we've introduced around defining these things called work item queues. And a work item queue is really a place you can go to to view a set of work items which relate to a, very sp to a specific workflow enabled uh, business document. And um, a team typically is assigned to a queue. Sure. Um, and so let's say we have a queue for purchase requisitions. So any work items generated will initially go to the queue and then whoever you have assigned to the queue can actually then review the work items, decide if they want to work on them, and then obtain ownership of them by yeah. claiming them. Yeah. And of course, they can reassign them to other queues, sure. they can reassign them to other people, but it just provides more flexibility. So you've, I mean, the, as you've described it too, which I think is really interesting, there's, there's obviously two kind of faces to this. There's the, there's the business user face, the person who is actually performing the task, and then there's the how do you, how do you actually stand these tasks up so they can be performed by people? Right. Why don't we take a look at the product and kind of give us a, a you know a, a look into how both of those sides are, are handled within uh, AX twenty twelve? Okay, certainly. Um, so what we're looking at now is um, a what we call a workflow list page, and uh, in the product itself, we are now shipping with over I think around actually around sixty what we call workflow types. Mm. So a workflow type is something that's created when a business document is workflow enabled. Okay? And um, so we've kind of tripled the number that we've actually generated and, uh, and are delivering in this release, which is good. And so the process from the business user perspective of creating a workflow begins um, when you pick one of those workflow types because you know that you want to create a workflow on a specific business document. Um, so from the, from the workflow list page, which uh, is accessible throughout uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX mm -hmm. 2012 in the modules that are workflow enabled, um, you'll see under setup um, a link for accessing the kind of workflow list page. Um, this is the list you get when you click that link. And from here, you can do a number of different things. If you have existing workflows, um, they'll be listed here. And you'll be able to see the name of the workflow you'll be able to see the association, which tells us whether it's really an organization-wide workflow, so it applies across the whole uh, instant, Dynamics AX instance, um, or if it's company or organization specific. Um, you can see the workflow type that it's based on, mm -hmm. and you can see uh, the number of instances or number of workflow instances that use that workflow, um, and you can see which version is active. Mm -hmm. So from here, we can actually uh, go in and uh, edit the workflow. And this will bring up the new graphical workflow editor. So what we've done, if, done is we've taken the uh, rehostable workflow designer from .NET 4.0, Workflow Foundation, and we've, we've built a bunch of extra things on top of that uh, control to give you this experience here, um, where on the left-hand side, we have a set of what we call workflow elements. And th so these are all the, uh, the activities, if you like, okay. that you can use when you're composing your workflow. And so... Um, the canvas itself is defined by having, obviously, a start point and an end point, sure. because typically a process has a beginning and an end. Um, and what we're looking at here is a, uh, a workflow that's been created against uh, the purchase requisition business document. And uh, let me just go over the, uh, what we have here. Sure. Um, first of all, we have a... Uh, what we call a condi conditional decision. Now, we've, we've been able to add this concept of a decision in this release um, to provide branching. That means that you can either automatically get the workflow to branch between two choices, mm -hmm. um, or you can do that manually. So you can get somebody... Uh, you can, I can just drag this onto the canvas here just so we can take a look at it. Um, so there's a concept of an automatic decision or conditional decision, which we use here, as well as a manual decision. And the manual decision uh, requires somebody to make a choice the uh, conditional decision that we have here is slightly different. So we can go into the property experience here and look at the, uh, the properties. So we can add conditions. And conditions are a pretty powerful part of workflow because they enable you to essentially implement your business logic or business rules or business policy. Um, here, we're, here we're using a conditional decision to assess whether a purchase requisition that has been submitted to workflow is valid or not. And in this case, we're checking you know, whether the, uh, the vendor account has a value in it and whether the net amount on the line items uh, is actually greater than zero, because it actually would help if it was. Yeah, right. um, so that's a conditional decision. The manual decision would be slightly different in the sense of um, 
assigning somebody to the manual decision and then they make that choice, sure. is it valid or not? So would it hold there for the person to make, to take action on it? Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so then, you know, we have this determination of whether the purchase rec is valid or not. Uh, we can then go to uh, what we call here review PR. This is a task, so we'll see that we have a task here under workflow elements. And um, this is the task that will be assigned to somebody to actually take a look at the purchase requisition and see, you know, is, is this a problem that we can fix? Mm -hmm. um, there's logic in workflow, so if there is a problem, uh, you can actually reject uh, the workflow um, if you're at this stage, let's say, at the review purchase requisition, and it'll go back to the person who submitted it so they can go and fix the problem. So there's a choice here about what can be done. Um, so that's so we've covered uh, the conditional decision, mm -hmm. and we also have a task on here. Uh, we can see if the purchase requisition was actually assessed to be okay, then we can go straight down to the approval. So we can drill down into the approval here and see that um, an approval is really uh, one or more steps because we want to provide as much flexibility as possible in who gets to approve and how. So if we look at this step here, and I'll, I'll bring up the uh, property experience again, um, then we can see here that um, we have the ability to, to name the step, we have the ability to set up uh, a subject and instructions, and these are surfaced to the end user mm -hmm. whenever they need to take a specific action on the workflow in the UI. And I would think just behind the scenes here, this is, this is an incredibly powerful part of the, the engine, but, it, but in terms of uh, you know, our customers who have been in the, the TAP or beta program right. as they've seen this, what's their feedback? Because this is certainly going to help them get a much more customized experience much more quickly to fit their processes and their business. Absolutely. Um, I think the feedback so far uh, through the TAP program and, uh, and, and even having shown this now at uh, our uh, Convergence 2011 conference um, has been very, very positive. And I, I think with things like business processes, you have to have a visual way of, of viewing them right. um, uh, so you can actually see what's happening. And most people are used to the concept of, uh, of flow charts and, um, you know, the kind of information that they give you about mm -hmm. what's going on. So this is a, hopefully a very, very familiar experience for people anyway. Um, I think a particularly powerful um, part of workflow is assignment. And this is because there's probably like an infinite number of ways you might want to assign tasks to people. Sure. Uh, so out of the box, we provide a number of different ways uh, to do that, including um, assigning to a group or a role, which we can see here. Uh, we can also see that we can use a hierarchy, mm -hmm. so we can actually get workflow to ascend the hierarchy either directly or by missing um, uh, parts of the hierarchy until you get to the top part of the hierarchy. Um, so it's pretty useful, especially when you use that in the context of what we call signing limits and, uh, and ensuring that people get to approve whatever they need to approve mm -hmm. you know, with the requisite signing level, level in place. Um, you can also assign to workflow users, so such as the workflow uh, originator, the um, uh, you know, the owner of the workflow potentially as well, um, and then users. So in, in here, we've got one example of, of a user assignment to, uh, to the admin user. You can also set things up like time limits um, on tasks and approvals and, uh, and manual decisions. Mm -hmm. And this ensures that there's going to be a point at which the workflow can be escalated if somebody has been assigned a work item uh, but hasn't, for some reason, gotten to it, just ignored it. Um, so that's, that's pretty useful as well. And also for approvals, we have completion policies, which give you, gives you flexibility around saying, you know, does it, is it going to take one user, is it going to take a majority or percentage, or everyone has to approve, okay? So, so built into this, um, into our workflow system, you know, there's, there's a lot of flexibility around how you set it up, mm -hmm. the information that you can put in there that you can communicate to people who participate in the workflow. So pretty powerful overall. Um, just wanted to mention also uh, we've added some other flow controls such as a parallel activity mm -hmm. because in some cases you may want at some point in the workflow uh, for multiple tasks to be executed at the same time. And so the parallel activity provides a way of doing Absolutely. that. Um, you can also invoke sub-workflows. So this is where you have a different workflow but you actually want to call it from the workflow that you're working on right now. Mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of the question around functionality and how we've enhanced uh, workflow. Uh, one of the patterns we were seeing before uh, was around the ability to process um, what we call line items. So if you think about uh, an expense report, 
that you might file. You have a header, and then you have a number of line items. Now, the line items obviously could be multifarious in nature. They could have different categories. They could belong to different projects. Um, and so they might need to be processed differently. It might not be adequate just to you know, approve the header. Okay, because especially if you have people working on different projects, you might need those project line items Absolutely. actually... to be charged to different places. Exactly. Yep. Um, so whether it's cost center, whether it's project, if there's some criteria that would result in a different type of processing um, for line items on a document, and this could apply to any document that has line items, mm -hmm. a lot of them do, you know, purchase rec, purchase order, sales order, mm -hmm. uh, timesheets, uh, expense reports, as I was mentioning, then it's possible using uh, workflow in Dynamics AX 2012 to implement a workflow that both can act on the on the header record, but also can act on each of the lines. And it'll and one of the secrets here is it's going to wait until all the lines are processed, and then it will continue. Um, so pretty powerful there. And I think the I mean I think the the key to all this is you've as you've shown it first of all super simple an interface for people understanding. As you mentioned, the graphical part of this is, is very important because if you're just dealing with right. line after line after line, it's kind of hard to kind of visualize how things flow together. So that makes it really easy. Um, and also, I think the other, the other part, I think, in the takeaway is really on the agility, the fact that this, is, this helps you kind of, uh, to the example you just mentioned, be in incredibly agile and not waste time and become more efficient in terms of how you do simple tasks, but also how you, on a larger scale, kind of run your business um, and make sure the processes are in place to support your goals and your objectives. Exactly. And I think, you know, in, in terms of uh, being adaptive um, and also the simplicity side of things, you know, this does allow business users who, you know, do not program as part of their job to actually set these workflows up um, and also be able to make decisions, you know, around, uh, you know, the types of conditions that they put in there, the type of assignments. And there's no programming involved in right. this side of it, right? right. I mean, you can, you can basically set this all up through the graphical workflow editor. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, pretty powerful overall. Th that's great. Well, listen, thanks a lot, Carl, for your time. And thanks for uh, giving us a, a sneak peek into this part of the product. We're looking forward to seeing it on the market later this year. Thanks again. Okay, thanks.